All right, guys, in this vehicle-specific video, we're going to be doing a 1996 Ford Mustang. Uh, frameless doors, simple dot matrix, quarter glass windows, and the back window is the only thing that's a little bit tricky because of the shrinking. It's a little bit harder to shrink, and you just got to cut out for these defroster uh, tacks right here, the little square. So we have this pre-cut out already. Just so you know, when you do cut it out, Make sure you cut out close with those contacts for the defroster lines. But we'll get to that when we do the back window. I've already prepped this vehicle, so we're going to jump right into laying out the bulk material, cutting out the doors and the quarter glass windows, and then we'll get to the back window. For this, I have a 40-inch roll. It's 35% standard pro. Um, prefer to use a 20-inch roll, but this is all I have at the moment. So we'll lay that out. Cut the extra off for the other side. And then we'll cut the extra off of this one for the quarter glass windows. So I'm going to show you guys how to cut the quarter glass window first. It's just like any other standard dot matrix quarter glass. line up the bulk material overlapping the dot matrix and simply cut right to the edge of the dot matrix as shown in the quarter glass installation videos. Right now, since we have the quarter window all cut out already, we're going to go ahead and mount it in place and install it. So with the Mustangs, I like to cut the bottom edge, always. Cut the front edge, shift it forward. When you cut the front edge, don't cut all the way up to this bend here. You're just going to cut up to here and then rip away. We'll shift it forward about a quarter of an inch. Not so much, though. Line up the bottom. Mount the back in place. Cut the back starting at the bottom of this curl here. And then we're going to shift it forward a very fine amount just to create a hairline gap on the back. Making sure that the bottom edge is still lined up. So keep that very tight. And then we'll mount it completely in place. No fingers pop up so you don't have to shrink this on the outside. So then we can go ahead and cut the top edge. Trying to continue with this curve here. And we'll clean that up with the final cut. And then with the front edge, I like to use as much material as possible 
So cutting off as little as possible. Because you can see up here, you have that, this little area here that protrudes forward a little bit. So I like to keep that the same thing on the front so you don't see a gap from the inside. So we'll continue the top edge and round that out nice and big and that'll be perfect. And then clean up the bottom edges. And then we can go ahead and install this. Just like any other frameless window, mount it on the outside, install it on the inside, and then we'll go over the finalization techniques, pushing out the edges. <laughs> Little tip here on this car is when you're spraying the inside, use the trim tool, or your, not a trim tool, an easy reach tool, the yellow contour, to open a gasket up and get that soapy water in there. Because if you're in a high heat area, that can be a place where the tint tends to stick. We're gonna leave the gaskets in the up position, so we're just gonna tuck them behind there. We're not gonna tuck the gasket down. And I'm gonna line up the front first, slide it into place behind the gasket, line up the bottom and the back, and then finally line up the top and make sure it's all nice and tight across the top. You may need to take a easy reach or the yellow contour and pull the gasket away so the tin can slide down. Same thing with the front edge, if it bunches up, just pull the gasket away and gently slide it into place. You can see right there, I struggled a little bit. That's what I meant with getting the water behind this gasket here because it can cause the tint to stick very quickly. I can go ahead and squeegee this out. Now you can see I'm not going all the way down to the bottom gasket. I'm just mounting this in place here because you gotta pull the gasket away at the same time to make sure that the water has somewhere to go and you don't bunch the material up. So we'll grab the yellow contour or the easy reach, pull the gasket away, and then squeegee at the same time. And then we'll go down the front edge with the yellow contour. And across the bottom. Then we'll push it out with the gray lid coat, huck towel, and the heat gun around the edges. The last step here would be to look around the edges from the outside, look for any Areas that may have contamination in the top edge or a spot that's sticking up. And I like to go over the outside with the pink, pink card, the little chiseler, and a heat gun. With the heat gun on the outside, I just push out across the top. You'll see a few little imperfections. Nothing's ever perfect in this business, so you always try to make it the best that you can. With this car, or any type of frameless car, the frameless door windows, you always want to apply excess heat across the bottom edge specifically, whether it be with the heat gun or the uh, infrared heat lamp sitting on the outside while you're working on the rest of the car. Let's 
go ahead with the back window. I got to throw the dryer sheet on there, so we'll do that really quick. All right, now we have the back window pre-cut. We'll lay that there. Um, if you're hand cutting this, all you have to do is cut bulk material as shown in the installation videos and shrink it like we're going to do here. Lay down our H pattern. Now you can see with this back window, the fingers are fairly large. So the whole key here is to take your time shrinking and work small sections from you to the center, from you to the center. And we're gonna go ahead and do that now and you guys will be able to watch me do that. We're gonna use a 3M felt card, double check our H pattern, high heat, working in small sections. Now, if something like this happens, you want to make sure you take your hand and push it so it stays up and down vertical. You want to keep that H pattern intact. Now, when we get to the last of the bottom section, you can work from the middle towards you, but preferably from you towards the middle. You can see when I'm going all the way to the top, I'm only using my fingers, I'm not using the card. That's just to keep the fingers split. Now the last section should be just as easy as the others, but if you did push material from that side to this side when you were shrinking, you could. this could be the hardest part, and sometimes it is. It just ends up happening, but just take it easy on the last part and it's your last step before you install the film. Now you can see here this material that burnt. That's just a release liner left over from the pre-cut. You can go ahead and cut that off if you have that. And then we're gonna spray the outside, squeegee, squeegee the edges so there's no contamination around it. And then we'll go and do the inside prep. All right, for this back window, we're gonna do the standard prep te techniques, but since we have the dot matrix up here, I have a double zero steel wool or triple zero. You, the finer, the better, because you don't wanna scratch the glass. But we're gonna go ahead and spray this up. On the uh, rear deck here, there, there's screens over the speakers. You can just give them a little squeeze and they pop off. Uh, they're up in the front seat, so I can't really show you, but you, you literally just pop them up and they come off. Nothing crazy. So we're gonna focus on the top area up here with the steel wool, just to make sure the tint sticks really well to it. This vehicle did have tint on it, so I'm gonna go over everything to make sure there's no glue left. One thing to be careful with these, and it's bound to happen every time I've done one, these defroster lines pop off. They will have to be soldered back on. Um, make sure you advise the customer beforehand of doing the car that these, this may happen, because it does happen very often. Grab the tint from the outside. This is a large window, so take your time. You may want to reverse roll method this.
the main key is to get the bottom edge lined up first and slide it down into place and then worry about the rest. Typically, once the film touches this dot matrix, it's stuck to the window and you won't be able to reposition it because it seems to stick to the dot matrix a lot quicker than the rest of the window. So you want to make sure everything's in place before you go and lay down that dot matrix because it will start to get like this if you do not wait. So when it comes to laying down the dot matrix area with the film bunched up like this, you want to kind of like just very lightly finesse it. You don't want to push it hard because it will stick and you will crease it. That's why I like to spray a lot of soapy water on the outside so my hands glide on it. Make sure there's no light gaps around the edges and just like any other back window, squeegee it out. On these uh, contacts for the defrosting line, if you don't cut them close enough, you will get them sitting on the actual solder part, so you may have to do some light trimming before you finalize the car, which is completely normal. Now the last step with this window, this back window, other than wiping down the seats that got all wet, would be to heat the dot matrix from the outside, then come back inside, spray it up so you have lubrication, and do a final push. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat the outside of this. I like to push it out once before I heat it, and then I'll push it out again after I heat it, just to make sure that it's down nice before you start that final heat process. You may wanna wipe all the dryer sheet off of the back window, just so you have a clear view of what you're working with. And while you're doing this, you can, if you have long enough arms, reach inside and kind of push out the dot matrix to make sure it's stuck in the corners. The main thing you want to focus with is the top corners, and then of course the top center between the corners. The bottom usually sticks just fine. Um, it is going to dry inconsistently. There are different methods to making this look good. You can do vinyl instead of laying the tint over it. So you'll cut the tint right to the edge of the dot matrix. Then once the tint is pretty much dried, you can lay a piece of gloss black vinyl on the inside, uh, which will delete the vision from the inside, but it will also delete the dot matrix inconsistency from the outside. All right guys, now that's how you tint the 1996 Ford Mustang Coupe. Last thing you're gonna wanna do is just look over the frameless door windows, make sure nothing popped up across the bottom, around the edge, make sure everything's laying down nice because it does rub on the gaskets when you open and close the door. They do not shift on this car, but they do rub on the gaskets. And of course, just go over the back window, make sure nothing popped up before you let the car leave. I'll see you guys in the next video.